Hi, I'm Rick Sellens, and I'm the instructor in MEC 217, Measurement and Mechatronics. I want to start off with the big story of what the course is about and where we're going with it so that you've got a feeling for exactly what you're getting into. I want to emphasize right off the start that every mechanical system that you ever build is going to have embedded digital measurement and control. So you need to learn how to work with microcontrollers. We're going to work particularly with a, a fairly simple microcontroller, uh, but the lessons that you'll learn will carry on to all of the much more complex systems that you might find in large uh, transportation systems, planes, trains, automobiles. You might find in uh, high-tech manufacturing equipment, 3D printers, or computerized uh, numerical control uh, machines like you'll see in the, in the shop or in heating and ventilating applications or any other environmental control application. These are just a, a few examples of, uh, of key mechanical engineering technologies. So if you have any doubts that these microcontrollers are everywhere or questions about specific applications and how microcontrollers might come into them, please come out to the, uh, to the lectures or to tutorials. Bring, the, bring your questions to class and we'll, we'll get them answered for you. This year, in 2021, we're retargeting MEC 217 to focus a little more strongly on the mechatronics side and a little less on the measurement side. That's because we've got our curriculum uh, has advanced to include a couple of courses in mechatronics uh, that follow on from 217 and really need the support and the background to make sure that you're prepared. So we're going to center around digital systems and programming microcontrollers in the C language in the Arduino IDE. We're going to build on the C skills that you got from first year so that you'll be able to succeed when you go on to MEC 210 and MEC 310 mechatronics courses next term and the following term. That's going to be really important. We're going to focus on practical sensor applications and limitations. We're not going to spend as much uh, time on the background of the physics of the sensors because that's getting less and less important. You can basically just look at the spec sheet and figure out what they're going to do for you without worrying nearly as much as you used to about how they work physically inside the sensor. We're going to focus on Ohm's law and how to understand basic resistive circuits for analog measurements. These are V equals IR type calculations that you should have nailed from first year. But if you don't, we're going to look back at those and make sure that you've got it all figured out because you're going to need it in future courses. We're going to reduce duplication of some of the material that's covered in the new analysis stream in MEC, MEC 202, 203, and 302. So you'll see a little less Python, less stats, less numerical analysis than we saw in previous iterations of MEC 217. What will you see? Well, here are the course learning outcomes for the course. You can find this part of the table in your syllabus. And what I want to do is run through what that's actually going to mean in terms of the activities we're going to do in 2021. There's seven course learning outcomes, but the first three are the biggest. These course learning outcomes one and two are going to be about getting your microcontroller to work and reading some data with it. So we're going to install and configure the Arduino IDE to be able to run your Itsy Bitsy M0 Express that you're going to get in your kit. You're going to write C code to read and write and average uh, and smooth analog voltage data. You're going to do some work storing data in arrays and processing the data in those arrays. You're also going to read and write simple and, and pulse width modulated digital data. And you're going to acquire digital data from either serial inputs or I2C sensors. And we'll find out more about that. Finally, you're going to be able to read and write data to the serial monitor for user interaction. That's going to be all about writing C code. That's going to be in your individual assignments. And that's probably about a third of the work that you're going to do in the course. Next. CLO3 is about selecting and applying transducers for basic mechanical measurements. 
You're going to build analog circuits for resistive tr transducers like photocells and thermistors, potentiometers, strain gauges, and load cells. And you're going to use Ohm's law to be able to explain exactly how those circuits work and how things would change if the resistance in those circuits changed. You'll be able to connect and operate the I2C sensors. This is the part where we're actually going to be wiring stuff up. And you're going to use a multimeter and an oscilloscope to check the circuit functions. That's going to be about a third of the effort that you have to put into this course. And a lot of that's going to be in the in-person lab sessions in the uh, plaza in Beamish Monroe Hall, where you're going to work with TAs and your group members to take some hands-on measurement with particular sensors. Finally, uh, course learning outcomes 4, 5, 6, and 7 are all about drawing conclusions from your data, explaining what's going on in your data, and making estimates of the uncertainty in your data. And so that's going to be about interpreting what you get out after you've made the measurements. And that's going to be about one third of the effort that you have to do. So these are the key things that you're going to be doing in this course. And the one I want to emphasize is that you're going to be focusing on your microcontroller, and programming that microcontroller, because that's a skill that I know a lot of you need to work on.